And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how are you, Blue Monday? Got to work like it a slave It's a very, very Blue Monday for the men in blue, their wives, their children, and their parents. When we have the equivalent of a revolutionary cop hater in the White House who clearly gave the signal that it's open season on police. As you know, over the weekend, a very, very sad story. A uh, Houston deputy was pumping gas, and a cowardly black man, a filthy, low-life, slimy, low-life coward, came up behind him and shot him in the back of the head and then emptied his gun out on him as he lay on the ground. Not one word from the White House. Not one word from this revolutionary liar in the White House who started this war on the police. I haven't heard the Republican Party say one word. I haven't heard John Boehner call for a special prayer in Congress. I guess they're on vacation. I don't know where they are. Not one word from the White House. Now, how long do you think this will go on until finally there is a civil war in the United States of America? A year ago, I published a book called Stop the Coming Civil War. But Obama started the civil war. He started it with rhetoric. All wars start with rhetoric. Obama declared war on white police. Obama declared war on the middle class. Obama started this war. And somebody has to stop this maniac before it turns into a full-blown, insane shootout in the United States of America. Nobody will hold Obama responsible for what he did. Nobody. Now, there's a Texas sheriff who happens to be African-American who said the White House and Department of Justice, that would be Eric Holder, started open season on the American police. Listen to clip number three on the Savage Nation. Listen. I am too pissed off tonight to be diplomatic about what's going on, and I'm not going to stick my head in the sand about it. I said last December the war had been declared on the American police officer led by some high-profile people, one of them coming out of the White House, one coming out of the... Uh, uh, United States Department of Justice, and uh, it's open season right now. There's no doubt about it. And that's right. It's open season started by Obama. Now I can prove it. I can prove it because I put together sound bites going back a year, and you will listen to those who started the. They didn't pull the trigger. Remember that. Obama, Holder, Sharpton, De Blasio, and others. They're the ones who gave it a wink, wink, nod, nod. Go out and kill police. They did it with their mouths. You listen to the following montage and you tell me that they're not responsible for the epidemic of cop killings in the United States of America. Listen on the Savage Nation. Since Ferguson and the task force that we put together, we have seen too many instances of what appears to be police officers uh, interacting with individuals, uh, primarily African American, often poor, uh, in ways that raise troubling questions. And you don't judge the fight on one round. Even if we get knocked down, we get up the and go low to the life corner degenerate. and come out fighting the next round. You belong in a you prison. You won the first round, Mr. Prosecutor. Did it. They did it. But don't cut my your opinion. gloves off. Because the fight's not over. Not Justice over. will come. Not over. Ferguson. Our police officers cannot be another one. and cannot be seen as an occupying force disconnected to the communities that they serve. I'm Ropes looking for 10,000 in the midst of the million. 10,000 fearless yes, men who say death is sweeter than continued life under tyranny. Death is sweeter! than to continue to live and bury our children. What parents have done for decades with children of color, especially young men of color, is train them to be very careful when they have a connection with a police officer, when they have an encounter with a police officer. We cannot Blasio. just go from episode to episode, city to city. Street there vermin, must be a national response. Street rat. The federal government must Street come rat. in and intervene on the Street issues rat. of criminal justice Street and rat. policing. Then we must rise up and kill those who kill us. 
stalk them and kill them and let them feel the pain of death that we are feeling. When anybody in this country is not being treated equally under the law, that's a problem. And it's my job as president to help solve it. All right, now you understand the long march that has led to the execution of police, white police, specifically by black men, an epidemic now in the United States of America. There is an outright war on white police that was started by the gentleman, huh, the gentleman whose voices you just heard on the Savage Nation. See, Obama is the slick architect of all of it. He never says it. But he uses the thug, Al Sharpton, to go out. And, you know, Sharpton was in and out of the White House a hundred times. So he goes in and he tells him what to go out and say. And then he makes believe that he has clean hands. He has no clean hands. So a deputy was shot in the back of the head as he was pumping gas by a black, low-life, cowardly thug. Empties his gun, 15 shots, not one word from the White House. Now let's go back a week. France, three brave American off-duty um, military guys, one black, by the way, subdue an Islamist, beat him up, stop him from executing people on a train. Even the socialist president of France, Hollande, gave these men France's highest honor, the Legion to Honor. While your president, your lousy president, your divisive, revolutionary, Marxist president has not yet said one word about those men, those brave men. He has not said one word of sympathy to the family. He has not called for the end of the killing of police by black radicals. He is behind it as sure as I'm standing here. Now, you have to understand how this all works. I laid awake in bed last night and I said this is all part of his master plan. And remember, I wrote Stop the Coming Civil War. He has neutralized the military by decapitating the active leadership of the military. He has only yes girls running the military, and that includes the men who are left. He has fired any general that would have stood up to him. He has gotten rid of any admiral who could have blown the whistle on Benghazi. He has decapitated the military the same way Stalin did, the same way every other dictator did, except in dictatorships they just shot them. Here they smear them and fire them. But make no mistake about it, this very dangerous revolutionary Marxist in the White House has deballed our military and that is why they're not fighting the war against ISIS. That's number one. So he lets ISIS rage across the Middle East. And in America, he releases the mobs on the white police in order to corral them and keep them because they are the only ones who could possibly stand up to what he has coming and what he has in mind. If you think, if you actually think that this dangerous revolutionary Marxist in the White House is simply going to go quietly into the night, uh, in 2016, you are crazy. You are mistaken. He has much more damage ahead for this country. I warn you, he has deballed the police, he has deballed the military, and he's doing it all so that we, the people, are backed into a corner. That's one man's opinion. This is a federal plot to take over the police force, to federalize all local police forces, because they are largely white policemen. This is all about racism from Barack Obama, who is clearly the most racist president you could ever imagine, occupying the highest office in the land. And if you think I'm the only one saying it, well, I really don't care if I'm the only one saying it. But I won't be the only one saying it tomorrow. Because millions of you understand that what I just said to you is 100% to be 100 true. And so we see what's going on. Graduating to treason. Graduating to treason. And that was the opening question to my book, Stop the Coming Civil War. And I asked you a question. By asking a question in a statement, rather, I said, people can justify a government's controversial policies and actions for only so long until they see a pattern of abuse of power. Then even the most devout supporters of any regime must decide if they support these extreme policies and actions or oppose them. With the current government under Barack Obama, this point of no return was reached for some when, uh, the, when they slowly realized the extent of the vast 
National Security Agency spying scandal. For others, it was the release of known Islamist terrorists from the Gitmo prison without congressional knowledge. For most Americans, the flood of tens of thousands of illegal immigrants from Central America, purposely created by the administration to overwhelm our southern borders, was the final straw. Still other supporters kept justifying one extremist act after another, justifying the president's policies and actions with rationalizations that included saying that those who opposed them were, quote, right-wing conspirators, racists, Obama haters, and the like. Yet for those of us who study governments that have taken nations from freedom to fascism, the handwriting has been on the wall for many years. My question is this. Will the Obama inner circle of extremist left-wing radicals trigger an event that will provoke an American insurrection, even a civil war? That's the opening to stop the coming, the coming civil war. I rest my case. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Pigs in a blanket, fry like bacon. 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 So here are the criminals in Black Lives Matter chanting just hours after a lone gunman shot a 47-year-old Harris County Sheriff's Deputy Darren Goforth in the back of the head while he was getting gas. These low-life criminals were chanting, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. Stop the coming civil war. Stop the coming civil war that Obama has started. Obama has declared war on the middle class. He's declared war especially on the military. Took care of that internationally. Then he moved on to taking a war stance against the white police in America, who are the only line we have between the low-life rabble who would eat you for breakfast. They'd roast you alive if there were no police. They'd break your house open, steal everything you have, rape your wife, and steal every possession you have. Make no mistake about it, this is a revolution going on right in front of your eyes. But, because you didn't read it in the newspaper, it's not happening. Because it wasn't on the evening news, it's not happening. So a reporter was shot last week by a black man. Reporters just doing their job. No rioting. No signs saying white lives matter. No demands for gay flags to come down. No blaming the black community. No social justice messages. No, because as we all know, every mature, rational, logical thinking adult knows that the suspect and the suspect himself was responsible for his actions and is accountable. And he was probably insane. But I can't say the same for the man who shot the cop in the back of the head. He was doing it under direct orders of his own brain. And the thought that he could get away with it didn't come from his own brain, did it? As I showed you with the sound bites we played, it started over a year ago with Obama, Holder, Sharpton, Farrakhan, de Blasio, and others saying that the police basically are the problem. And in fact, one of them even saying, go out and kill them, point blank. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, a tourist was shot dead in the streets by an illegal alien. Nothing has been done by the useless police department and sheriff's department in San Francisco, who, again, wonderful police department, completely corralled and destroyed by the socialist one-party system under uh, the mayor who reports directly to the machine that runs out of Sacramento. Meanwhile, the streets of San Francisco are filled with human feces, human urine, and human vermin on bicycles. Over the weekend, the human vermin on bicycles attacked a woman in a car, uh, with a bicycle chain, beat up, broke the windows out with a bike lock. They were riding against traffic after tying up traffic, 8.16 p.m. Friday night on a major thoroughfare, and these street criminals beat up a woman, beat up her car rather, broke her window open, and the police said they cannot prosecute this man, even though they have a picture of him. They said they will not and cannot prosecute him. Road rage cyclist breaks car window with U-lock. We have anarchy, we have outright civil war against civil, civility in this country, and it's all coming from the top. Now, I can 